Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, how are we? Doing great. How about you? I am wonderful. We're in studio. I'm excited yeah. about the topic today. Absolutely. I actually, like always, I have very little <laughs> idea about this topic. And hopefully you guys are kind of in the same boat as me. And uh, and that topic is inositol. Inositol. My first question is, did I even pronounce that right? You did. You did good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> inositol, guys. Robin, explain it for us. So inositols are a naturally occurring substance. Um, it, they resemble simple sugars. We okay. use them in a supplemental form very often. Um, there's at least eight different known types of inositols, but the most commonly used and researched are going to be myo-inositol and d inositol If you see a supplement that just says inositol and it doesn't specify, it's going to be myo-inositol. Okay. So the body can naturally produce inositols from things that we eat, but we can't produce enough for certain conditions. Um, your body can produce maybe a maximum of about one gram per day from everything we eat. And even to get that much, you've got to be like on par eating exactly the things that you're supposed to be eating. Okay. Um, so what do inositols do? They're going to act as secondary messengers of the insulin signaling pathway. So taking inositol exerts an insulin sensitizing effect in the body. So they can help to lower blood glucose levels um, in the body. So we use them very often for insulin resistance is one of the things that we like them for. So uh, the 101 version I'm hearing is you eat and your body produces inositol from this yeah but not enough so we have to supplement we can supplement. we can su okay yeah. okay yeah. um and so i'll get into the the conditions that i really like to use inositol for but we can supplement okay in supplementing one of the big things we're doing is acting on the insulin pathways okay so taking an inositol supplement can help to lower insulin levels help to um, sensitize the bodies better to insulin so we're helping with insulin resistance um, inositols can also act as a modulator with oxidative stress so they can help reduce oxidative stress which of course everybody knows is really hard on your cells um, so it, why it's important that it acts on insulin, one of the ways is that insulin regulates um, a series of cognitive processes such as memory formation. So it's been studied and shown that central insulin resistance, so insulin resistance in the body, has been linked to things like premature aging, neurological disorders, even things like Alzheimer's disease. So they're actually researching different types of inositol as a treatment for helping to slow down the progression of Alzheimer's disease right now. Super interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah. So there's a lot of different uses for it. Most commonly, we are using this for PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you've seen my PCOS video, I've talked about inositol there, but just not in depth. Um, metabolic syndrome, gestational diabetes, it can actually be used to help control that. But it also, like I said, because of the, the way the insulin acts in the brain, it also helps with different neurological disorders. So this has been researched for OCD, um, depression, anxiety. Like I said, they're researching for Alzheimer's. Super fascinating. Yeah. So, so like my, my first question would be is who isn't this for? Because it seems like everybody yeah. could benefit <laughs> from it, but you're just using it for PCOS. Or Currently. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's one of the biggest things that it's gotten traction for is PCOS. Okay. Um, but like I said, a lot of neurological disorders can benefit from this. So why? Um, inositol is found in high concentrations in the brain. It facilitates communication between cells in the brain. So the neurotransmitters in the brain and in the body rely on inositol to help them relay messages back and forth. Okay. So that's why it's been shown to help things like OCD, um, anxiety, depression, um, panic disorder. It's even been researched in schizophrenia and has helped show improvements in, in clinical symptoms. Oh, wow. Um, bipolar disorder, all kinds of neurological disorders can use this and, and see improvement with it. Um, dosing for neurologic, we're getting up into pretty high doses, like 12, anywhere from 12 to 18 grams a day dosing. Wow. And like I said, your body can make about one gram. So you can see why that would need to be supplemented. Absolutely. Um, but for any kind of neurological thing, you pair this with choline and it, it really can work really well for the brain. 
Interesting. So like brain fog stuff as mm-hmm. well? So yeah, it can, it can be like beneficial. Help you think more clearly. Again, I'm thinking like, who wouldn't <laughs> want to use this? Well, and the nice thing, which I'll get into potential side effects later, but the nice thing is there's just not a lot of downside to it. Most patients tolerate this really well. So it's something that can be tried and just see if we benefit from it. Super interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So great for neurological stuff. Um, like I said, also great for PCOS for a multitude of reasons. Um, so women who have PCOS, polycystic ovary, syndrome have a 50 to 70 percent higher incidence of insulin resistance okay um, than than a female that does not have PCOS so that insulin resistance is the main driver behind the symptoms of PCOS the okay. higher testosterone level the polycystic ovaries the lower progesterone higher estrogen the weight gain all of that kind of stuff um, is driven by the insulin resistance that's why inositol works so well for this. So myo inositol specifically is the one that we're using in PCOS. It helps to regulate your insulin levels. It's also going to regulate TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, um, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and it helps to lower androgen levels, which is the testosterone in the body. Hmm. Um, we often combine this with d inositol when we're using it specifically for PCOS. This combination has been shown to really help all the symptoms of PCOS improve, including fertility. Um, so it's a great combo to take for, for women with PCOS who are trying to conceive. Mm, okay. Um, the standard treatment for PCOS is birth control pills and metformin. Um, the inositol has been shown to have comparable effects with that metformin without the side effects that metformin has. Okay. And so those we can, side effects being metformin. A lot of people can't oh, right. can't tolerate the stomach stuff that goes along with that. Okay. Um, a lot of people will fail therapy on metformin because they're just in the bathroom continuously whenever they're taking it. Got it. Um, so the inositol, we're still getting that insulin reducing effect. We're helping the insulin resistance, but without the same side effects of it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and so inositol has actually even been studied in teenage girls with PCOS. So this is something that's safe across the age span. Um, the big study that I read was 13 to 19 year olds um, that had been diagnosed with PCOS. They did a controlled study, put some of them on inositol, some of them on oral birth control, which is, like I said, a very common treatment, and then some of them on a combination of it. And the inositol group did the best. So it showed a significant decrease in their weight, their BMI, glucose levels, their C-peptide, their insulin levels, their LH, their testosterone, all the things that are an issue with PCOS, we saw a significant decrease in. Um, Of course, the oral birth control pills didn't do any of that. Those girls actually gained weight and it didn't improve any of the insulin parameters or anything like that. Now, is there a way to know if you need to, like, if you need to take inositol besides, like, is there a way to know that you're not producing enough out of curiosity? Not more really. Like a, a gut feeling? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we just, we recommend it when there's a condition that I think it could help, which would be all these things that I've talked about. Super interesting. Um, and because it's, it, like I said, it can be naturally produced in the body. I'm really not worried about, um, too much of it. Like I said, studies have used up to 18 grams a day. Wow. I never recommend going over that. Usually my recommendation is somewhere between four to six grams of this a day. And if it helps, then awesome. And if it doesn't, it we didn't hurt anything by trying it. So there are some side effects. There are some potential side effects. Okay. Um, I tell everyone to start out very slow on this. So like I said, my normal dosing for PCOS is four four grams a day. And that's where I usually tell people to aim for. Um, For the neuro stuff, we slowly work up from there. Um, But PCOS, four grams a day of the myo inositol, 100 milligrams a day of the d inositol is a great combination for that. Side effect wise, the myo inositol is the one, of course, we're using in higher doses. So we have to start very slow on it, usually half a gram to a gram a day and slowly work up to the four grams, which is the goal. And if we're going higher, than that for neuro, then again, slowly working up on that. Some people, it can cause a little bit of GI upset, nothing close to what metformin does. Um, And usually if you don't go in at a high dose, you're going to be completely fine on it. And for some people, it can have a sedating effect, which is nice if we're using it for something neuro like anxiety. Um, It can help to kind of calm things down a little bit. So usually I recommend splitting the dose up throughout the day. If you're a person that it makes you more sedated, take it all at bedtime instead. We don't want to be tired all day. Um, but really, other than that, I, I see most patients tolerate this really well. That's amazing. And nosotol, I've heard, a, yeah. I've heard a lot of people talk a little bit about it. 
you really explained it today, Robin. Yep. I appreciate that. Anything else we need to cover before we, uh, good. before we say that inositol is explained? It's explained. It's explained. It's explained. <laughs> guys, you name it, we explain it. As always, we'll see you guys next time. This has been on inositol. We'll link the uh, episode to PCOS at the bottom. Uh, I hope we're going to do, <laughs> do that in the editing process. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Don't go away.